and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines happening now. In the News is brought to you by the T1D Exchange, a nonprofit organization dedicated to improving outcomes for the entire T1D population. Big week of news following the 2023 ADA Scientific Sessions Conference. What follows is just the tip of the information iceberg, so please follow the links in the show notes for much more. The top story, though, actually isn't from ADA. A new FDA approval for a pancreatic islet cell therapy to treat type 1. It's called Don Islet Cell, developed from cadaver donors and given as a single infusion straight into the liver. Immunosuppression is required to maintain cell viability. Approval was based on what seems to be a very small study. 30 people with type 1 who had hypoglycemic unawareness and who received between one and three infusions. After one year, 11 people did not need to dose insulin, and 10 stayed that way for more than five years. But five people in the study were not able to stop dosing insulin at all. And this method is different from what Vertex and Cernova are trying to do with stem cell therapy, and Vertex is moving forward on their clinical trial. As presented at ADA, all six patients treated with VX880 had type 1 diabetes and required an average of 34 units of insulin a day. Following treatments, all six patients demonstrated insulin secretion, improved A1Cs and time and range, and two patients completely insulin independent after one year. Their A1Cs 5.3 and 6.0, again, that is without taking insulin. With those results, the company can move on to part C of this trial. Cernova also reports good results with their cell pouch system. Five of the six patients who completed implantation continue to experience insulin independence, one for more than three years. The sixth didn't have any trouble, just only recently completed the protocol, so no results yet. There is a second group testing a larger cell pouch. The news you may have already heard from ADA, though, was of course all about the type 2 and obesity drugs. Here are some headlines. The Surmount 2 clinical trial evaluating trizepatide, that's Monjaro, for weight loss in adults with obesity or type 2 diabetes, average weight loss 15.7% at the highest dose, that's about 34 pounds, a lot of other health benefits such as lower A1C levels, for half of those in the study down to 5.7, which is considered non-diabetic, and lots of other improvements, weight loss, improvements in cardiometabolic disease risk factors. Monjaro is currently approved for type 2, expected to be approved regardless of diabetes status later this year. Another study called Pioneer looked at oral semaglutides, some are calling it the Ozempic pill, when compared to other anti-diabetic medications such as Jardians, Genuvia, and Victoza. People taking the oral semaglutide saw 1% or more reduction of A1C. They were also more likely to achieve a 5% or more reduction body weight. This was not a study comparing a semaglutide pill, though, with the same type of injection. It was comparing the oral pill to older diabetes drugs. Look for two additional new drugs to treat obesity in the next few years. Or for Glipron is easier to use and produce. It will probably be cheaper than existing treatments. It is a pill. The other one, retretretide, looks like it could help people lose even more weight than with Monjaro. Here's hoping that the brand names of those drugs are a little easier to pronounce. Dexcom announces a new product in the U.S. coming in 2024, designed for people with type 2 who do not use insulin. This will be built on the G7 hardware with different software and a 15-day sensor. CEO Kevin Sayer also announced that the G7 will be able to share data directly to the Apple Watch, no phone needed, by the end of this year. Avid announces a partnership with Weight Watchers. People with the Freestyle Libre 14-day or Libre 2 sensors and who are using the Weight Watchers diet plan will be able to see their CGM data directly in the Weight Watchers app. This is also a study where Abbott will launch two pilot programs directed at using CGM data to help people with type 2 adjust and manage their diet, regardless of whether they're on insulin therapy. A little bit more news about Abbott's dual glucose and ketone sensor under development. Announced at last year's ADA, the company says it is moving forward. Not much more to report here other than an Abbott executive says, the sensor will be aimed at catching rising ketones level as early as possible to help avoid cases of diabetic ketoacidosis. And he says, there's so much we need to learn about ketones. There has not been a continuous sensor for them before. 
So there's really very little we know about the evolution of ketones. Right back to the news in just a minute. But first, I want to tell you about the T1D Exchange. I'm so happy to partner with them. I really believe in what the T1D Exchange does, and especially the registry. The more people they have in their registry, the more they can study different aspects of living with type 1, including your experience with things like not only medications and technology, but diabetes burnout and parenting and so much more. This is really simple to use. You just sign up and then complete surveys, have the opportunity to sign up for studies. Your personal information remains confidential. You know, it's fully voluntary as much or as little as you want to do. But the information you share here really moves the needle. You can help advance meaningful T1D treatment, care, and policy. Check it out. Please find out more. Go to t1dregistry.org slash Stacy. I have a link on the website. You can go there and look for the logo. It all brings you to t1dregistry.org slash S-T-A-C-E-Y. Back to the news now. And Beta Bionics has received clearance for the compatibility of the FIAS pump cart. This is a pre-filled insulin cartridge. The eyelet was approved earlier this year, and it works with Novolog, Humalog, and FIASP pump cart. I spoke to CEO Sean Saint earlier this month on the podcast, and he indicated they were hoping in the future to move to pre-filled cartridges for all of the insulins that work with the eyelet. Aura, the ring that tracks your sleep, will start sending info to three CGM info companies, January, Super Sapiens, and Very. All three of these companies provide feedback and programs based off of the Libre CGM. They will now be receiving sleep scores and other biometric data from Aura so they can see how those measurements affect users' glucose levels and overall health. And just a fun fact here, it was brought to my attention this week that there is a Facebook group called Type 1 Diabetics for 50 plus years. And it looks like this week, that group passed over 1,500 members. I've reached out to them. I really want to talk to some of the folks in that group. I've talked to many of you before who've lived a long time with type 1. But I think that's pretty remarkable. 1,500 members of a group, type 1 diabetics for 50 plus years. That means the people in that group who've lived with diabetes for the least amount of time were diagnosed in 1973. On the podcast next week, I sat down with Dexcom's new chief commercial officer while I was at ADA to talk about their announcements about the type 2 market and other features important to people with type 1. You can hear that coming up on Tuesday. And the previous episode is with the author of Kick-Ass Healthy Lada. I'm getting great feedback on this. We cannot talk about Lada enough. We rarely talk about it and we will talk about it more. Thank you for all of the feedback. That is it for In the News for this week. If you like it, please share it. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Stacey Sims. I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.